Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy and today I'm going to be trying out some nylon like resin from Sunlu. And I want to see if this is going to be a good resin to use if you are printing miniatures and you want them to be durable, you want them to be tough, maybe a little bit bendy. So if you drop them, you won't have to worry about them shattering and costing you time and money to replace. Usually when I see different resins that's designed for miniatures, it's usually like ABS like resin that people tend to go with because of its strength. But I haven't seen too much stuff about a uh, nylon like resin. Now I say nylon like because it is not actually nylon. It just possesses some properties that's similar or reminiscent of nylon. And if you do want to pick this up, Sunlu's website has it for $39.99 for one kilogram bottle. You can also find it on Amazon for that same price. Now I didn't pay anything for it because Sunlu sent this resin to me so that I can try out. But rest assured, I'm going to show you exactly what happened when I tried to print with this resin in my old but still reliable Anycubic Photon Mono 4K 3D printer. I used Chi2 Box and I used the pre-selected profile that was already uploaded in Chi2 Box for this resin for that printer. So I just used the default profile and the first thing that I did was print out an Amerilabs test town. And looking at the results of that test town, it looks like it did pretty decently. Some of the gaps that you're supposed to see through are sealed shut, which is an indication of overexposure, but everything's still printed out and it looks decent. So you can choose to lower the exposure time in order to get a better result, but this is fine for now. So I'm just gonna go with it. I also did a standard two wash cycle for this and some dirtier IPA and then over to some cleaner IPA. And then I cured it. I usually cure things that are small for about three minutes, but I found that after three minutes of curing, my models were still a little bit tacky to the touch. So I bumped that time up to six minutes to get rid of that tackiness. But the, since the resin I used is white, giving it that six minute cure time did introduce a bit of yellowing. So now it looks somewhat off-white, almost beige in color. So that's something I think you should look out for. But if you're printing this for miniatures, you're gonna be priming and painting it anyway. So how it looks when it's finally cured, it's not gonna to matter too much. All right, so with all that being said, let's take a look at some models and how they hold up in real world conditions. So the first things that I printed out were these ships that are totally not from Warhammer 40K, and these things turned out very nice. Check out the details on the little antennas that are on the top and all the little dots and bumps and control thingies that are all on the sides of the ship. I didn't lose any parts. All of the supports came off without leaving a bunch of marks behind, so I say this was a success. Next up is a pair of goblins that I printed. And as you can see, it's kind of hard to make out the details of this white resin, but the models are still nicely detailed. Now, let's talk about getting these things off of the plate. Now, it was not difficult to get these off the plate. It is a little bit more concerning when you have a small format printer like this, because you need to be safe enough not to pierce through your hands. But as you can see, I was able to pop this off the build plate without trouble at all. Getting the supports off the model is a different story altogether though. Because this nylon like resin is really bendable and it's actually quite strong, I did have to apply some heat in order to loosen it up enough to break those figures free. So it's not the easiest thing to remove them from the supports. It's not difficult, but it does take a little bit of extra finesse. Now that these goblins have been cured, let's take a closer look at them. Now with this close up shot, you can still make out the details of this goblin here from his knife and his different clothing and the hood on his head, the ears, and even the facial expression. I think that it still comes off looking pretty good. And then we have this other goblin where I think you can see the details a little bit more finely on him. And what's also cool about him is that he has some things on him that we can test out. Now, if you look at the bottom of the robe, it does look a little bit rough. That was left over from removing the supports because like I said, they can be pretty tough holding on to the model. So a little bit of light sanding, depending on your model, might be necessary in order to get the cleanest finish. But let's check out the bendability of this resin. 
you can see that he has these arrows sticking out from his shield. And what I'm going to do is just give these a bit of a bend. Now, they feel at the touch at first like they are going to snap because they're not like super, super easy to move. But as you can see, I'm bending this arrow back almost all the way to the shield. In fact, I think I might be touching the rim of the shield and it does not break. The sword is something that is thicker and I think will be easier to break. But as I am bending this thing, it is not snapping at all. In fact, it even tries to maintain its memory by going back to its original position. It does need a little bit of coercion in order to get it to look exactly how it was before you started bending it, but this is still pretty impressive. So while it's nice to be able to bend certain parts of your mini, to be honest, how many people are really doing that in real life? I think a better test would be to just drop these and see how they hold up. And I put these minis through a drop test above my head, down onto my hard table, and they bounce off the table, they bounce onto the floor. In my testing, the only thing that I was able to see that broke off were some really tiny antenna parts on one of the small ships, but it was still mostly intact and it was barely noticeable. They have an almost rubber-like quality to them when they bounce and they are astoundingly strong when it comes to the impact damage. So this is definitely the type of resin that I would recommend if you are worried about your miniatures breaking in a drop test because these things stood up, even the ship. So make no mistake, this resin, it is strong and durable and it's great for miniatures. So before I wrap this up, I did want to give you a sense of what the models can look like once you actually prime them and put paint on them. And if you just excuse my extremely amateurish and green painting ability, you can see that the detail that these models were able to have coming off the printer using this resin, it's still there. You can see it. So you can just kind of imagine if you put your really awesome painting skills to the test, you can have a model that still looks good, way better than mine. And you know that you won't be wasting your time getting this resin if you're looking for detail. And remember, this was done on the Anycubic Photon Mono 4K. So by now, your resin 3D printer is probably way better. So that was the Sunlu nylon-like resin, and I think it was a big success. Uh, this resin is pretty good for minis. Uh, really strong. Those impact tests were passed with flying colors. So if you're looking for a resin that's not an ABS-like resin, that can give your mini some good strength when it comes to hitting the floor, hitting a table, and to give some of those thinner parts a little bit more bendability, this is definitely something that you should check out. Now, one last thing before I wrap this up, and I don't really know how important this is going to be, but when you have the minis in their raw form and you cure them, it does have a tendency to leave behind like a little chalky residue on your fingers. Uh, I, I don't know if that's really a big deal after you prime them. That's not really an issue anymore. At least it wasn't for me, but still thought that I should bring that up. But that is all for now. Let me know down in the comments if you ever used a nylon like resin before. And if you did, what was your experience like with it? Was it as good as mine? I hope so, but curious to know. So that's all for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.